I'm John Walker. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. I'm your host, John Walker. Last week, the MIAA announced its decision to move forward with winter sports as regularly scheduled, and the association gave the green light to a conference-only slate, which will include 22 games for Northwest basketball. They also included the approval of indoor track and field to schedule competitions as well. And speaking of, we're virtually joined by Northwest track and field head coach Brandon Masters. Coach Masters, thank you so much for joining us. It just First and foremost, what was your initial reaction and your teams to just having a season? Well, I was excited, obviously. Uh, we've had uh, a rough go in, in track and field and cross country, and uh, we've had um, six national championships canceled, but four conference championships canceled if you count men and women, indoor, outdoor, and cross country. So uh, real, real difficult time for the kids. And, um, you know, biggest thing about uh, why we do what we do is to compete. Uh, practice is one thing, and we practice for the most part year round right. uh, versus a lot of sports. And um, you know, getting the opportunity to compete is is huge. Uh, so with indoor track and field uh, being able to move forward, uh, it's a, a big deal, uh, especially when you have huge field house to be able to host some indoor meets. And coach, Ed, for the people that don't know, indoor track and field just kind of schedules their own meets anyways. The MIAA never really releases a, a, a schedule for you guys. So what can we expect? When can we expect to see the Bearcats and where are you guys in the scheduling process? Well, we've made some uh, you know, modifi modifications, but minor. Um, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do was, um, you know, kind of keep our normal dates for our uh, indoor home competitions at Hughes Fieldhouse. And for the most part, we have. The only one that I'm, I'm kind of wondering about still, and haven't finalized working with Andy, uh, uh, our athletic director, and, and being able to uh, make final decisions. But uh, the December meet makes it tough. Uh, with no classes after Thanksgiving, uh, the, the possibility of, of um, you know, moving that to January is high. And, uh, but for the most part, we've, we've been able to, uh, I guess, pencil in our dates and we know what we're doing. Having gone into now, this is the third year for hosting. Uh, we, we know what, uh, what to expect. And, um, you know, I think if anything, uh, these meets will be in even higher demand. So we've got to look at, uh, maybe even some modifications on, on total capacity. And so that um, um, means we have the Hughes Field House and 300 meter track, one of the best tracks in the country. And people want to come, uh, but I can't have 50 teams at a meet like I did last year. We had one meet where we had 51 total teams. Now that team may be three to 80, uh, you know, participants uh, from each team, but 51 nonetheless. So. Uh, that may be a little bit difficult to handle and social distance and do all the things we need to do. Um, so there's still some things that we have to kind of finalize before um, we know exactly the plan for this year. And Coach, just with hosting a meet, I know that you guys are trying to keep the same schedule with the Bearcat Open and Hughes, but what are some of the intricacies or, I, I guess, hassles, if you will, of trying to host a meet? Well, yeah, so... Um, you know, with with Hughes, it's a it's a nice sized facility, but um, when when you have that many teams, it's very difficult to keep team camps away. So basketball and football are a little bit different. You know, they go to their locker room, they they warm up on their half the field, they they play, and and they move go home. And a couple of hours, you know, three hours, that's kind of about it. Now, a truck and field meet may start at nine and end at nine. It may be a twelve hour type of deal if it's a big enough meet and so being able to keep team camps separate enough, um, it is a low-risk sport uh, deemed by the NCAA. But you still have to look at how do we put each team in their little box, if you will, and, and keep separate. Because on the track, we're not going to have a lot of a lot of issues, but it's uh, the off-the-track stuff that, that matters. So we're looking at a lot of different options. Uh, we host to a variety of different types of colleges um, you know, around this area, and NAIA, and and uh, D2, uh, D1, um, JUCO. Um, so, um, you know, trying to find out the best solution to keep everybody uh, in their areas and have a great competition is 
it's going to be interesting. Winter sports are a little less than two weeks away from starting practices on October 15th, and the men and women's basketball teams will open the season November 19th against Northeastern State in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. We're going to take another quick break. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we talk about fall sports once again here on KWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. We've made everybody aware over the last few weeks about the possibility of Northwest football returning this fall, perhaps in the spring. The MIAA announced that it will not develop a schedule for football, but the guidelines allow for each institution to schedule no more than four joint practices, scrimmages, games with outside competition or other MIAA member schools. One Bearcat has continued to work on himself during this odd season, and our reporter J.D. Wessel met with senior long snapper Bailey Pickering to see how he's preparing for what lies ahead. J.D. Senior Bailey Pickering has spent the last couple months working on improving his skills as a long snapper for the Bearcats. He's been doing workouts on his own at Bearcat Stadium, and he talked about how the postponed season has been somewhat beneficial for him. I think for me personally, it's it, it's been different because I don't, I have more time to improve how I'm going to do things. I don't think that I am at the peak of where I can be snapping wise. So I think it's helped me, you know, just I get a little bit more time to perfect that and keep improving on that. So it definitely help, helps me out in that aspect. Pickering said he likes to keep note of what he wants to work on from day to day to become a better player for the Bearcats. You know, I, I kind of, before I come out here, I kind of think like what I want to work on or if I had a rough day doing something the day before, then I'll come out and work on that. So it, it kind of depends day by day, but yeah, definitely just recently being able to feel how my body's moving and like noticing, okay, well, I need to do this so that I can improve this. Like it, it all ties together. Um, you know, and you may come out here and work on one thing and you, you fix that, but then you have to tighten up something else because you just lost something on the back end. He also mentioned why this season is important to him, even if him and his team aren't able to play a full season. This, this year's important to me because it's my senior season. Um, I, I will stick around for next fall when we have a full season, but, uh, you know, I, I came in here and I was hoping to start and that didn't work out. And so I uh, just kind of looked at myself and said, well, you need to be better. It's not it's nobody else's fault but your own. So that's why I come out here and I put in the hard work that I do and just trying to get better every day. The Bearcat football team started practice on September 28th and they are preparing for a potential season in the coming months. For now, Pickering continues to put in work outside of practice. This has been J.D. Wessel with the Bearcat Update. Thanks, J.D. Other fall sports like volleyball and women's soccer are possibly playing in the spring as well. The MIAA is still discussing how they will conduct those competitions and tournaments later this year. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll look into the Maryville High School volleyball team as you're watching Bearcat Update right here on KWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update, and unlike Northwest, Maryville High School has been competing throughout this fall. One of the successful teams for the Spoof Hounds this year is the Varsity Volleyball team, which started off the season with an eight-game win streak. Our reporter Chase Chambers met with Coach Miranda Mazzara and others to see how the Spoof Hounds have been dominant despite all of the uncertainty. Chase. As seniors Carissa Stolte, Macy Lowe, Kelsey Scott, and Serena Sundell prepare for their last season as Spoof Hounds, they also get used to some changes. We have learned that we have to be flexible and how to wear masks like during games and on the sidelines. We had a few players out because of quarantine, so I think it was challenging, but we overcame that and we have a lot of versatile players that can play different positions. Volleyball comes as second nature for Spoof Hounds coach Mazzaro. I've been coaching high school for three years, but total coaching experience, including club, would be five. Clarissa shares her favorite memories with us from the past three seasons. My favorite memory is districts last year. We won. It was really exciting. We played together as a team, and I think it's one of the best games we've played as this group. Um, last year... As a team bonding, we had to uh, take cardboard boats out to Mazingo and swim in 30 degree weather. Serena shares the changes they've made from this season's from previous seasons. It's definitely changed the environment we played in, so we don't have fans. Well, we have some fans, but not as many as last year, so we've had to produce that energy ourselves, which has been challenging, but I think we've done pretty well. Coach Mazzaro shares with us who she thinks their toughest opponent is in this season. 
It might sound cliche, but I do feel like we are gonna be our own toughest opponent. I think putting good pressure on ourselves to compete in our own gym is gonna be the biggest challenge. Serena is taking her athletic abilities to the next level. I'm committed to play basketball at Kansas State University. The Spoof Hounds are ranked sixth in class three and are looking to gain some momentum in the rest of the season. I'd say there's just a little bit of pressure, but it's good pressure. We, um, it keeps us going carries into games, um, keeps us playing hard, so I think it's I think it's good. It gives us motivation and it kind of gives us momentum to just continue through games and I think we've done really good and we haven't gotten like too big of heads or we haven't gotten too pressured by it yet. Reporting for Bearcat Update, I'm Chase Chambers. Thanks Chase. We are bringing it back. My first pick of the week of the semester and this week it's the fighters. In honor of October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I wanted to use this platform, much like professional sports do every year, to urge and encourage everyone to support the cause. In 2014, my mom, Angie, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Thankfully, she beat it, made a full recovery, and is now living life to its fullest. But for those struggling, and perhaps not as fortunate as my mom, you're not alone. And to anybody that's been personally affected, whether you've had it or know a loved one that has, I can't put into words how much it means to rally around that person and help them fight or let them know that you have people in your corner that will fight for them when they might not be able to do so. So do that for them, be there for them, love them. And so my pick of the week and really this entire month is the fighters. And to anyone affected, I love you, I'm with you and wishing the best for you. That's gonna wrap things up for this week's episode of Bearcat Update. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at BearcatUpdate underscore eight. You can catch all of our previous episodes on YouTube at KNWT8. Comment, let us know what you wanna see from us. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week. I'm John Walker. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. How are we doing, guys? Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Bearcat Update. For last week's, click up here. And for all of our previous episodes, click down here. We'll see you next week.